Welcome to just one of Skillcap's famous class guides that are the most valuable resource available that actually help you improve in Arena. This is just one of the many videos that are part of a comprehensive course for how to play Shadow Priest like a pro. We spent hundreds of hours developing these courses with players that have spent thousands of hours perfecting their craft. This allows you to learn all the secrets and strategies of the world's best in just a matter of minutes. For everything you need to go from feeling hopeless in PvP to being the teammate everyone wants and actually start climbing, be sure to check out Skillcapped after this if you're serious about improving. Hey everyone, what's up and welcome to step 2 of our Shadow Priest course. Step 2 is all about the good stuff, damage. We're going to be taking a look at how to deal the most optimal sustained damage and even providing you with some small tricks on how to min-max your damage before covering the age-old question, how do you deal damage while being trained? So without any further ado, let's jump straight into it. First of all, let's discuss damage. Damage is one of, if not the most important factors in Arena. You could be the best WoW player in existence and counter every single move that your opponent makes, be amazing defensively, or even create the perfect 3v1 setups every single time. But let's face it, all of that is useless if you're not just doing damage and killing your opponents. Now, damage can be separated into two parts. You've got your consistent damage on one side and your burst damage on the other. In this section, we're just covering your standard consistent damage. No resource spenders, no CDs, just your standard damage rotation. The biggest portion of your consistent pressure and overall damage as a Shadow Priest actually comes from your two damage over time effects, Shadow Word Pain and Vampiric Touch. Your goal is to try and maintain these on as many targets as possible, or well those targets that you're looking to pressure that is. What I mean by that is that there are two different types of Shadow Priest comps, ones revolving more around setups and ones where you want to maximize your damage. For instance, there is Shadow Play, which is Affliction Warlock Shadow Priest. This is a comp where you'll want to deal the most pressure possible, so maintaining your dots and focusing more on consistent pressure becomes a lot higher of a priority. Then there's compositions like Warrior Shadow Priest, or even Shadow Priest Mage, where your consistent damage takes more of a backseat. What I mean by this is that making sure to maintain Vampiric Touch and Shadow or Pain on your targets that you're not focusing becomes a very low priority. Alright, so with your two primary dots covered, it's time to talk fillers. A filler is a low priority spell which you use when you're not bursting, which we'll delve into later, and already have your damage over time effects that we've just mentioned up on the target. Shadow Priest fillers are abilities that generate insanity, our main resource. These are Mind Flay and Mind Blast. Simple, right? Well, yeah, it is. Mind Blast comes with a cooldown attached to it. If you have your dots out and can cast it freely, then you should, as it deals some moderate damage, but more importantly, generates you 8 insanity. If Mind Blast is on cooldown, then the next order of damage priority is to Mind Flay. Mind Flay again generates you insanity, does some very minor damage, and slows your opponents. It also gives you a chance to proc an instant Mind Blast from Dark Thoughts, or allow you to cast Void Bolt due to your conduit of choice Dissonant Echoes. So yeah, that's it. Now you know the standard sustained damage rotation. Get your dots up, Mind Blast off cooldown, then use Mind Flay as a filler. Easy enough, right? But hold on, let's pause the video there. We're not doing PvE here. As a Shadow Priest, you're a hybrid class. While it is good to know your standard rotation, unfortunately, if you want to play well in Arena, you can't just sit there doing your standard PvE rotation and expect to win. Well, at least not as a Shadow Priest. Shadow has a bunch of utility, some of which you're expected to use within your standard rotation when needed. The best way to learn what I mean by this is to see it in action, so let's take a look at this game here for instance. As you can see, I have my standard dots up on all three targets that I'm looking to pressure. From this point though, instead of moving straight into my two lowest prio damage fillers of Mind Blast and Mind Flay, I opt to use my utility. So my first global is to purge the mage's barrier using my dispel magic. To put this into perspective here, if I were to Mind Blast, it would do an average of about 2k damage. If I Mind Flayed, even less, and I would generate, let's say, at max 8 insanity. But instead, I've used my Dispel Magic to remove the Mage's Ice Barrier. I've effectively done 8k damage now, which is how much the shield absorbed, and also generated 6 insanity in the process thanks to hallucinations. We continue the clip a bit further, and we see the Mage pops his Combustion. So once again, instead of doing anything else on my damage prior list, I instantly use Dispel Magic to once again remove it. Then follow up by using my Power Word Shield onto the target that my enemy is focusing, which in this case is the Shaman on my team. 
Again, as we know, this will also grant me insanity because of hallucinations. Now, with my Power Word Shield on cooldown due to weakened soul and there being no important buffs to purge, I go back to the standard rotation and mind blast the Paladin. So my point is, while there is a standard damage priority, you can't follow it blindly. Consider your utility like Power Word Shield and Dispel Magic essentially a part of your standard rotation per se. These spells are also on a different school of magic and both instant, so it can be used without having to deal with interrupts and also while moving. As a result, this means that you should aim to Power Word Shield either yourself or your teammates whenever they're under pressure. But let me guess, you're sitting there thinking to yourself, well, which buffs should I look to use Dispel Magic on? Well, we've got you covered. The high priority buffs that you should stop whatever you're doing and remove them instantly be prioritized instead of Mind Blast. And then the low priority spells can just be removed instead of where you would usually Mind Flay. So to recap, let's take a quick look at the consistent rotation. First, you'll want Dots Up. Then, think if you should use Dispel Magic or Shield the target, if not, Mind Blast or Mind Flay as fillers. Alright, now that we've broken down how to deal the optimal sustained damage, let's talk about how you should look to execute your burst damage. Shadow Priest isn't usually known for its burst, but things have changed with the introduction of Shadowlands. While you're still nowhere near, let's say, a Fire Mage or Windwalker, you can still deal very impactful burst damage for a short period. More commonly though, Shadow Priest Burst, aside from a few abilities like Mind Games, is more so just going on to boost your sustained damage by a small margin. Your burst damage as a Shadow Priest comes from your spells that have a cooldown, as well as your Insanity Spender. First of all, I want to break down each ability, when you use it and how it works, then we'll cover the standard burst sequences. Let's start off with the most common way to burst or supplement your consistent damage, which is Devouring Plague. Devouring Plague is a Shadow Priest's only resource spender. Almost all of your burst abilities, sustained damage abilities, and even utility all reward you with insanity. Then insanity is spent on Devouring Plague, nothing else. It costs 50 insanity, does some decent damage, and also contributes to your mastery. There isn't really any special way or time to use Devouring Plague, it's just a part of your standard damage. The one rule that you'll want to aim to abide by though, is to ideally never ever cap on insanity. If you're at 100, make sure you look to spend it before committing any other damage globals unless pooling insanity for burst. The same as with your consistent damage, Devouring Plague can be used a multitude of different ways. Generally speaking, there are three different types of compositions. Comps where you'll want to do sustained single target pressure, like Warrior Shadow Priest for example. There are comps where you'll want to maximize damage, like Shadow Play. And then there are comps where you're purely playing around setup damage, like God Comp or Shatter. If you're going the sustained damage route, it's simple. As you get 50 insanity, you cast Devouring Plague on your main target. Whereas if you're looking to maximize damage and win on mana, it's more impactful if you spread your Devouring Plague around. This will greatly improve your overall damage and AoE pressure. Then, for setup comps, it's a lot more favorable to hold onto your insanity. This way you can look to combine two or maybe even three if you're playing Damnation, Devouring Plagues, onto the same target during a setup. And yes, if you were wondering, Devouring Plague does stack. Basically, when you cast DP on a target with it already on it, the damage the first DP had yet to deal gets added to the dot portion of the new one. You won't see two stacks of DP, you'll just have one that deals more damage, which makes it far better for doing a lot more burst in a short period. Next up, let's talk about Shadow Crash. Now, Shadow Crash is a lot more simple to include in your arena gameplay. It deals some decent damage and generates you some insanity. The best way to use this ability is honestly just off of cooldown. Although you can delay its use for a setup, say if you've got your stun coming back soon, just delay Shadow Crash. Up next, the big one, Void Form. Void Form is our biggest offensive CD. After casting Void Eruption, you'll enter Void Form and your Void Eruption will change to Void Bolt. Before we cover usage, there are a few things that you should understand about this form. When active, it will grant you the full benefit of your mastery. Now, I've touched on mastery a lot throughout this guide as it's one of the most important aspects of maximizing your damage. Void Form, when popped, will act the same as if you have Devouring Plague, Vampiric Touch, and Shadow Word Pain on your targets. So your Dots, Mind Blast, Void Bolt, and every spell you have will deal full damage. While inside of Void Form, you also gain a bonus to spell power and access to Void Bolt. This is not only one of your hardest hitting spells, but also grants you 10% damage due to the talent hungering void, as well as also extending the duration of your void form. This makes it extremely important to make sure void bolt is always used off cooldown when inside your form. So when do you use void form? Well, 
First of all, you're always going to want to gain the maximum value. You don't want enemies to line of sight, you don't want to be locked on cast, and you don't want to sit in CC while you have the void form active. And this also follows the same rules as Devouring Plague. If you're looking to purely maximize damage output, pop it off of cooldown. If you're wanting to deal the maximum burst in a setup, combine the damage of your initial void eruption alongside your other burst abilities to deal high amounts of damage in a short period of time. Generally speaking though, whenever you're using the rest of your offensive cooldowns, you'll want to use them during your void form as they all gain benefits from the increased damage you'll be doing. Shadow Fiend is the first of which and should be used a global or two before you're about to enter void form. It does very high single target damage and generates you insanity, so don't neglect your little friend. The same goes with Power Infusion. If you're running with Twins of the Sun Priestess Legendary, it's better if you cater around your teammates' offensive cooldowns. Otherwise, just combine it when you're looking to use Void Form for extra haste and dot ticks. Remember though, classes with a Purge will be able to remove it, so be careful when using Power Infusion against Mages especially, as they can steal it and then look to turn the tide. I also quickly wanted to touch on Void Torrent before we touch on exactly how you should look to burst. So Void Torrent is very niche in the fact that you'll only ever want to take it in matchups where you need to win in a single setup or matches where you know that you won't be the target. Some examples of when to pick Void Torrent are in 2v2, when playing 3v3 and you know for sure the enemy will be training your partner, and finally in comps like God Comp or Shatter where you're looking to create clean setups. Void Torrent does a huge amount of damage in a very short period, especially if you have Power Infusion or Void Form active, so it should be used in times where you want to burst your enemy. Okay, last thing to talk about is Mind Games. Now, first of, let me say if you're not playing Benthir and wanting to PvP, what are you doing? But yeah, I understand you may have to cater more around PvE, and if you are running either Necrolord, Nightfate, or Curian, just simply use them off CD. Back to the point, Mind Games, oh my, what an ability. Mind Games is just so insanely strong. How it works is that after a huge initial hit, you'll then confuse the target's mind. If they do any damage, they'll instead heal their target, and if they do any healing, they'll damage whoever they heal. This means that you can use Mind Games a multitude of ways, either on an enemy healer to reduce their healing, or on a DPS mainly just for the initial damage or to reduce any off healing that they might do. Remember though that Mind Games can be dispelled, so making sure to get the maximum value is going to be your goal if you're playing with a Warlock, lucky you. Aim to use it on the healer anytime they have unstable affliction and they can't really counter it. If not, it's up to you to think how you can best use it. The simplest and most effective way is to just use it for the initial damage. But remember, it shares the same cooldown as your Psychic Horror and Silence, so combining the three can always make your mind games a lot more impactful. Alright, so let's talk burst rotation. How do you do the highest amount of burst possible? First of all, you want your dots up, including any Devouring Plagues, followed up by a Void Eruption, Mind Games, Void Torrent if you're playing it, then finish off your target with a Shadow Word Death. But, like I said at the start of this section, your burst as shadow is mainly just a boost to your sustained damage. So you'll do some impactful damage with Shadow Crash or Mind Games or even Void Torrent and Shadow Fiend. But for the most part, Void Form, Void Bolt, and Devouring Plague just assist your overall pressure more than contribute to high burst. Alright, now that we know how to burst and how to deal sustained damage, how do you take that to the next level? How do you really push your DPS? The number one key and most important thing is dot uptime. As I mentioned previously, your dots make up pretty much all your consistent damage and overall damage, making a very conscious effort to always have them on the targets that you are looking to pressure will greatly improve your damage. Utilizing tools like Damnation and Unfurling Darkness can make this task very easy. It's also important that you aim to not cap on Insanity and make sure to spend it on Devouring Plague. The second tip, and again another really important one, is to never miss a Void Bolt cast. The general Shadow Priest damage rotation while inside Void Form is always two globals, Void Bolt, two globals, Void Bolt, and continuous until it ends. Learning this rotation and making sure to never miss a cast will often be the difference between being the highest DPS in Arena or the lowest. Why this is so important is down to the Hungering Void talent as well as the Conduit Dissonant Echoes. Not only does Void Bolt hit decently hard, but you're consistently extending your Void form so are gaining the full mastery benefit for longer. My third tip is to make the most out of your mastery. Understanding your mastery as a Shadow Priest can really help to bolster your damage. 
Even at low amounts of mastery, your damage can be increased by over 15%. How mastery works is that your damage is improved by 5% for every dot you have up on the target. Your dots are, of course, Vampiric Touch, Shadow Word Pain, and Devouring Play. So having all three up on a target is going to increase all of your damage by 15%. This means ideally you want to maintain dots and focus the target on which you have Devouring Plague up, at least with your Mind Flay, Mind Games, or Mind Blasts. Remember though, once in Void Form, you gain the full benefit of your mastery even if you don't have those dots out. Our last tip is very minor, but this is all about min-maxing, so why not cover it? And that's making use of Dark Thoughts correctly. Dark Thoughts is the new Shadowlands Instant Mind Blast proc, similar to Shadowy Insight from Legion and BFA. This time though, it now procs from your Mind Flay ticks. I know it's very rare and Mind Flay is low on our priority, but when you get one of these procs, it's actually usable while you're Mind Flaying. This means that you can just squeeze out a little more damage as you can start a Mind Flay cast and save an extra global if you're able to freely cast it. Not major, but something worth knowing and min-maxing when the situation allows for it. But for the most part, dot uptime, utilizing your mastery, and making sure to void bolt are without a doubt the most important things for maximizing your damage. Get them down to a T and you'll reap the results. Now, if there is one section that would improve your game tenfold, it's going to be this one. This is one of the hardest concepts to learn and for a good reason. Shadow Priest is very vulnerable to being targeted, heavily focused, and subsequently shut down. And if you don't know what you're doing or how to play while being trained, getting your damage out can feel like an uphill struggle. The first rule of being trained is to learn positioning. Take a look at this very common scenario. I'm being completely railed by a ret paladin and an arms warrior. Okay, so let's pause the clip here so that we can see the ret and warrior are of course on top of me, and the shaman is at the pillar, line of sight in my warlock. What do you think about my positioning throughout this clip? Am I positioning well or poorly? If you said my positioning was good, you would be incredibly wrong. Now, the clear pickup was that the Shaman has a pillar and is also line of sighting my Warlock. This is what you need to understand. When you're being trained, you're in a unique advantage in that you dictate the enemy melee's positioning. So, you're probably thinking, okay, so what has this got to do with dealing damage while being trained? Let me continue the clip. So, as you can see, I'm recognizing that they are committing to training me and I'm looking to now reposition. So if I pause now, what's changed? Well, the Retin Warrior are still training me, so nothing new there. But this time, take a look at the Shaman. He's now forced to leave the pillar and be in the open field. This then opens him up for my Warlock or even myself to secure CC or damage. But okay, so once again, what has this got to do with dealing damage? Sure, it's going to make your own and your partner's life easier to hit the healer, but that isn't directly allowing you to deal damage, right? Well, let's take a look, shall we? Can you see what's happening now? The Rep Paladin and the Warrior are forced to choose. Do they continue to train me and make it impossible for their Shaman to heal them, or do they just swap targets? They're dropping low, their Shaman's in CC, so they retreat, and while they run away, I have free reign to do all the damage I want, even scoring a kill. So this is a very simple concept and something that you should always look to apply. Whenever melee train you, dictate their position. Make it as hard for them as you possibly can. This can be achieved on every single map and is one of the easiest ways to not only get damage out yourself and make it easy for your teammates, but also relieve pressure defensively. Alright, so with that out of the way, let's now talk about how to deal actual damage while being trained. So at this point, you should know how to burst and how to deal sustained damage as well. Well, you'll know just that you want to get your dots up first. This can thankfully be done with relative ease, even while being trained. You've got Damnation and Unfurling Darkness, and this will allow you to get your dots up on two targets training you without having to worry about interrupts. Once you have your dots up, you should look to deal with kicks. The best way to do this is with Void Eruption. The reason for this is the synergy between Void Eruption and Driven to Madness. Watch this clip for an example. I cast my Void Eruption full well knowing that they have kicks ready. I get kicked, and my Void Eruption is ready to cast again. The reason being is that Driven to Madness reduces the cooldown of Void Eruption when you're being hit. But when you're interrupted, it's spaghetti coded to be on cooldown, so you essentially reduce your own lockout. Then you've got even more tools. When you're being trained, it's almost impossible to ever utilize Psychic Scream onto a healer, so if you want dots up and you have two melee training you, don't be afraid to just commit your Psychic Scream to allow you to cast. There's also many scenarios where you can't afford to cast. You could be looking to reposition, so need to keep moving, unable to deal with interrupts because you're low on health, or a few other cases. Well, in these scenarios, 
what you do is utilize your instant damage. For instance, just cast Shadow or Pain every global. It's instant and does some initial damage. You can still Void Bolt, and you can still Devouring Plague. Then, once again, you've got your utility, which we mentioned earlier. You can purge buffs, you can shield yourself. All of this is still building up insanity and contributing to your damage output. You're really only required to cast one spell, which is Vampiric Touch, as Mind Flay and Mind Blast don't really impact your overall damage as much as you might think. So, as long as you work on getting Vampiric Touch up on targets that you want to pressure, you're going to be fine. Also, don't be too scared of interrupts, especially when you're at a stable amount of health. There are so many times I see players simply just not casting or just faking over and over and over again. Just tank a kick, press Dispel Magic a few times, shield yourself, and then freely cast once the lockout is over. It's really not that big of a deal. Once you get over the psychological hurdle, it's smooth sailing. In fact, if you play it right, you get even more damage than if you were freely casting thanks to Driven to Madness. Shadow Priest's damage also has some special interactions with other classes that you should be aware of, mainly with our Covenant ability Mind Games. We've covered how Mind Games works already, so we know it deals damage to targets if they heal themselves. Well, there are many mechanics which proc auto heals, and because of this can make Mind Games extremely deadly. The first of which is Restoration Shamans. They have an ability called Nature's Guardian, which means if a Shaman drops below 35% health while having a Mind Games, there is a high chance they will die, which makes them great kill targets for Shadow Priests. Next up is Mages. Mages' most dominant spec right now, as you more than likely know, is Fire. And they have Cauterize. If you manage to reduce them to the point where it procs while they have Mind Games, they will instantly die. And then there is, of course, Resto Druids. Resto Druids make a great target for Mind Games. Naturally, Druids heal with their healing over time effects, using a Mind Games on one, and they'll always instantly be in a ton of trouble due to not being able to control the damage that they're doing to themselves. You've also got Mass Dispel. While technically not damage, it can be used offensively in order to remove immunities, something no other class can do. The main use of this is to remove either Ice Block from Mages or Divine Shield from Paladins. Then, the last interaction with a damaging ability worth touching on is Shadow Word Death. Now, Shadow Word Death, while a standard damage ability, also functions as a way to break CC, casting a Shadow Word Death just as a crowd control like Polymorph or Freezing Trap, to name a few, will cause you to take damage after the ability lands, thus breaking you out. Something to always take into consideration and apply to your gameplay as being able to avoid CC or put yourself on diminishing returns will keep you in the game for longer. Alright then everyone, that's going to conclude part 2 of our Shadow Priest course. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more up-to-date PvP guides. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.